Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Judy and this is Running So and So. Today's video is all about a brand new pattern from a brand new designer. Now, a couple of years ago, during the lockdown, a group of ladies in Sheffield put together a sewing challenge called Anorak August, and they are called Sheffield Social. I'll put all the links in the description box. One of the ladies from Sheffield Social is called Izzy, and Izzy wanted to take her love of sewing to the next stage, so she set up a little business called Izzo Sew Studio. And I've followed Izzy and I've kept in touch with her throughout um, the past two years and kept an eye on what she's doing sewing wise and have shown a lot of interest and shared a lot of the things that she's done. So when she put the call out for pattern testers, I was like, yes please. So I knew that Izzy would come out with something really interesting. I'm going to review the dress. Now I was very fortunate in that I did do the pattern test twice. I did it twice because after the first round of pattern testing, Izzy rang me up to talk to me about how I had done the zip. Now, the zip in the original pattern did not have the lining sewn in to the zip. By that I mean she hadn't caught the lining into the zip, she hadn't slip stitched it down. But now I can tell you it has been and she has altered the pattern. And we talked a lot about how I'd achieved it and Izzy went away and through her metho methodology has changed it. I haven't actually read it to see how she's done it because I probably would still do it the same way that I've already done it, but I will have a little look at the pattern as well. Now, the first version of the Rivlin ruffle dress that I did, I'm going to show you now. Epa. Me encontré a una niña tan bonita Siempre se ha parecido a Yemaya Y por la calle con su ropa azul camina Y todo el mundo está gritando Ay, cómo va y a responder Now, And those of you that subscribe to Sew Haley Jane will recognize that as one of her fabrics. And I made that from the Sew Haley Jane February box. I love the fabric then, I love the fabric now and I adore the dress. And it was that dress that I spoke to Izzy at length about. Having made that dress, she said that she was going to do some, she'd done some alterations, would I do it again? So roll forward and I did the second pattern test and I'm now going to put in my footage from second pattern test. So this is my Rivlin dress pattern test number two and I was able to alter a few things on pattern test number two. I didn't do number one. Obviously, I have an issue here. It's called wind player's diaphragm. And Hannah, who is filming this for me, knows exactly what I mean by wind player's diaphragm. And suffers from it. Your diaphragm has become overdeveloped because you are a wind player. And I play the oboe, which is quite... You have to get a lot of air out of a very small, small space. So, this is in the glorious Savannah Viscose by Lady McElroy. Um, which I bought as a job lot from Sean um, after we'd been to the Stitch Festival last year. She had a job lot of it. I would recommend it. It takes a little bit of extra time and technique, but the instructions, which I will show you very shortly, that Izzy and Tim have done, are absolutely exemplary. It takes a lot to get me to say something is exemplary on the sewing front, bearing in mind. I've seen patterns develop and evolve over the years, but this is absolutely taking it to the next level and I want to walk you through the instruction manual that I've got. So, as I say, it fits me beautifully around here. Now, I had to make an alteration because we got distracted because of dia wind player's diaphragm. The dress is on the natural waist up here. Have you stopped? No, it's still recording. Okay, oh, it was a telephone. So here, I've had to make alterations. So I have had to allow for expansion, but because the way Izzy's cut the pattern, you have got gathering here at the um, bust. Can you come in, Hannah, a little bit? You can zoom in on the hand thing, you know, just Sorry. there. Just here, and just here. And it allows you to make that alteration, so you can allow for more here by just giving yourself a little, and taking it in just here. 
as I can say, I have done the river. It, it is not a sleeved dress. It is a sleeved dress, dress, sleeveless dress. If you want extra ruffles, you can have it with ruffles on here and ruffles on here. You could have ruffles here and no ruffles there. No ruffles at all, and change your ruffles around to what you want. You could extend your ruffles for more sleep. More you could actually covered. make your ruffles bigger if you wanted to, but Izzy hasn't got that as an option on the pattern, but I'm sure she'd love it if you did. You could also have tears down on your dress if you wish to, a bit like the Wilder gown. I love this pattern. Uh, I've known Izzy, I met Izzy through, I'll do that bit through um, another bit on the video later, but this dress I think I am going to wear, so when I've finished hemming it, <laughs> so notice that I haven't hemmed it. But I'm actually going to wear it to my nephew's wedding. I'm going to a vegan wedding because James and Anna are vegans. So I reckon that if I wore this, it was plant-based and, and, and um, Ocotex certified. I'm going to get some Converse's to wear with it. But the way this dress feels on me at the moment, it just feels so comfortable. I'm having tea with Laurie-Anne and Rachel and Ruan and Tamlin very shortly in York. And I, I might not even bother with the with the uh, double gauze dress that I wanted to make. I might just wear this because it is so comfortable. Eva, me encontré a una niña tan bonita. Ella siempre se... Now, what do I like the most about this particular pattern? Well, now, I have printed out the new instructions for the Rivlin ruffle dress and here it is in all its glory it's absolutely the most amazing dress now i've printed these pattern pieces out just on my printer but i have been using a company called is it fabulo fabuloso and you can get your patterns printed there on a bit of tissue paper and I was quite happy to have it on tissue paper because I was cutting the size I wanted knowing that the pattern would get amended. Next time I want the pattern I'll get it reprinted so I've got the updated amendments. And the booklet came out as so. Now I'm going to tip this camera down and I'm going to show you how fantastic Iddy, Izzy's instructions are. Here we start with the booklet, the Izzo Say Studio booklet. And the instructions are so clear. These are the original ones that I had. And looking now at the new ones, there is absolutely oh, no difference except I've probably got them all in the wrong order. I've got the back there. Let's try the front. Here we go. Here are the new, new instructions. And there's very, very little change through. And I will just go through them a little bit because the bit that I want to point out now is that Izzy and her husband Tim have put in these beautiful links so when you buy the pattern online you will get a PDF and the PDF will link you straight through to Izzy's tutorial on how she has constructed this particular dress so when you go through it and you look at how she's constructed it if you've got any queries on any aspect of constructing the garment you can just refer to it very similar to how a Maison Fauve pattern is um, presented to the world. So when I had the pattern booklet done and pages came out on the booklet, I was amazed. This is genius. You have got your size checker with your, with your fabric quantities and you've got your finished garments and it goes across the page like so. There's no flicking between screens. There's no flicking between different pages it's there in front of you absolutely lays out perfectly and i think that is absolutely fantastic all the layout instructions are absolutely spot on and you've got a clear color key and look at these for the pins look how they've done the pinning you see where to her husband's into graphics. Now I've come to a selected page, I've just taken any page and through the careful colour co color coordinations which Izzy has put down the bottom there, you can see which part of the garment you are meant to be working on at what point. Now it's very cleverly constructed around the bodice because you have to use a burrito method to put, pull through the two sides of the garment, there's no other way of doing it. Trust me, I've done it twice now. 
and very, very clear instructions, even down to how she has constructed the zip and how Izzy has kept that piece away and she's left it loose up to there. That was how we left this part of the garment free so that you could sew in the zip. Her instructions for lining in the zip are absolutely perfect as well. There are several different ways in which you can put in an invisible zip and the way that Izzy has outlined putting your zip in in that dress is absolutely fine. Personally, I don't use that method. I use the Kenneth King method. I'll put a link in the description box for the Threads magazine site. It is where you sew up the seam for your concealed zip before you put the zip in. I also have gone a vlog on putting in various zips and again I'll try and link it I'll try and link it up there but it might be down in the description box below but wherever it is I'll find out what minute it is for the conceal zip and I'll put that there the reason I am suggesting that you do the zip the way I would do the zip is simply because I like to think that the two pieces of fabric are joined together to create the one and that way you can make certain that your seams for your bodice panel on this particular dress or your bodice panel to skirt, bodice panel to top bodice, those crosses that are formed when the vertical and the horizontal meet, they should meet perfectly. If you do the seam first, you are guaranteed that those will be in the right place. So there'll be no putting your zip in and then thinking, oh heck, I'm out of, align I'm out of alignment. You know, I'm not lined up. I need to have some little line. Can you imagine my knuckles on the lines? There's not going to be any of that or that. You're going to have them lined up straight. Because you tack the seam first, you sew it, and then you put the zip in, and it will be perfect. The same at the tops. The tops will be absolutely perfect as well, and that's what you need to achieve. You need to make certain it's put in that way. It is a trickier method. It does take longer. But you can guarantee first-time result with it. And I'm one of these people that will do something the longer way to make certain I get it right the first time. And when I did my sewing courses all the way back at the beginning, oh my gosh, I did my City and Guilds 27, 27 years ago, I was doing this course. And you are creating one piece of fabric into which you're putting an opening. So if you were pattern matching, if you sew the seam up first, you will know full well that your pattern will match down the back, down the side. You need it to be perfect. Lecture over. So, let's have a little look at Rivling dress number one. So this is the first one. Such a busy fabric for your dresses that you can't see the design details. But the design details are that I have got ruffles. We've got a sort of vanity panel here. Now you can have this panel up here or there's an option to have a lower one. Personally I like the higher one, it's just me. It has a ruffle that goes all the way around the neck. That's better, we have a ruffle that goes all the way around the neck. I've got my arms in it so you can see it and it goes to the back and then I've got ruffles on the sleeves. You do not need to put these ruffles on. So if you just wanted a really simple sundress, you can take the ruffles off and you literally do have it. Now, as I described on my, the earlier in the vlog, here, you can actually make the dress size between the different, grade between the, with this pattern, you can grade easily between the different sizes. And if you make the bodice panel slightly bigger, you can take, you can gather in or take out, so whichever way, bigger or smaller, you can adjust the gathering here accordingly. And then you can taper it up the sides because I tend to have this larger bit around the diaphragm, but I'm very narrow across here. It's just one of those things I have to do. Now, I haven't put frills on the bottom of dresses. I prefer the skirt to hang longer, but I can understand why people would want to put that frill on. I think it might just be an age thing. And for me here, I have the zip in the side. And as you can see here, my horizontals and verticals. Oops. You can't even see it. This is exactly how it should be. You shouldn't be able to see what you're showing somebody. But here, I've got a cross. And here, I've got a cross as well. You just 
can't get it to, to, to stay in focus but that's what you want to achieve and similarly at the top you want it to be perfect like this and if your zip goes right to the top you just do not need to have a hook and eye so that's the first one and I love the fabric is heavier so that it drapes really really well and I hope you would agree with me on the picture for that now this is my Savannah Viscose here is the first part of the join where I make my first join and then my second here now when you you do an invisible zip now this invisible zip has ended up slightly lower and I need to put in a hook and eye for the top but the top pieces do match I've used a pink zip it doesn't matter the colour of the invisible zip the only thing you're going to see is that little top bit there and in all fairness I could take that off and make a tab out of a scrap of the fabric if I wanted to but yet again, I did this exactly the same as I did the first one, except I do have a longer hem. Yet again, the design of the dress takes a busier fabric. I did notice when I watched Izzy sew along on the dress last night that she's used this particular fabric to make the dress for the sew along. Now, the big question. Would I recommend the lovely Rivlin Russell ruffle dress for you to make? The answer is a very simple yes. I would easily recommend it. The one thing I would say is, it does take a little bit of skill. It's not going to be a dress you can put together in an afternoon. It's going to take a little bit of time. I sit on the slower sewing camp rather than the faster sewing camp. That's just me. We're all different and there's nothing wrong with that. You could do this dress in a day. Personally, with the pressing and the gathering and the burritoing and getting the zip in absolutely spot on. The hand sewing of the, of the bodice, because if you're going to line the bodice, it's got to be hand sewn down. It does take time. For that perfect dress that you want to create, allow yourself the time to make it, I would recommend you do this dress. It is the most flattering and comfortable dress I've made in a very long time, and I will be making more you've enjoyed my review of the Rivlin Ruffle Dress, thank you for joining me and I do hope you visit Izzy's site, I'll put the link here and I'll put it again in the description box. If I can get it up there I'll try and get it up there as well. This isn't an ad, I'm not paid to do this, I'm doing this because I loved the pattern just as I did with the Billy and the Pearl earlier in the year. I love the patterns, I'm going to shout about them. If you found a pattern you like, shout about it because that's the only way we all find out about things. We listen, we watch, enjoy your sewing, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.